Hello and welcome to another episode of Archery Sights Ad Nauseum, and today I'm going to cover the new for 2023 Ultraview Slider Bow Sight. Unsurprisingly, I have a lot to say about it. 7,064 words, give or take a few. This video isn't going to have a ton of B-roll or visual elements to it. I'm going to put stuff up on the screen that's relevant to what I'm talking about. But uh, if you want to just treat it as a podcast and uh, pop some headphones in and listen to it while you're doing something else, that would probably be the best way to digest it. So, enjoy! This particular one comes from batch number 3, which I ordered in on August 21st. It was slated to ship in late November, and this one showed up on December 7th, and I've been working on this review ever since. The last time I looked at Ultraview's website, they are currently on batch number 7, which is supposed to ship in April of 2024. So if you're looking to purchase one of these within the next 6 months, you're more likely to get one more quickly by keeping an eye on the websites of Ultraview's other dealers. Ultraview sends out a certain number of units they finish to their dealers at the same time they're working on filling the orders on their website. So places like Lancaster or Shields, however you pronounce it, may suddenly be in stock and available for order while you continue to wait on your shipping notification on the order you placed on Ultraview's website. Something to think about. In the interest of disclosure, I do not have special or early access to any archery products, and I suspect I probably never will. I purchased this site with my own money and waited for it just like everyone else. I also have no sponsors, affiliations, or brand loyalty in general. Consequently, I have nothing keeping me from telling you exactly what I think about this piece of equipment and about the company who made it. There are good things and not so good things about both of them. Also, before I get started, you're going to hear me say as offered a lot in this video because it's one thing I don't like about how Ultraview handles sales and customization. Also, also, if anyone thinks my points border on nitpicking, my response is that archery equipment is expensive. If we're going to pay top dollar for something, then it should be top quality, and it should be able to be put under a microscope to ensure it works the way it's supposed to, and we get what we pay for. My goal is to make sure you understand what you're getting, and one man's nitpick is another man's last straw. So let's get into it. I think of the UV slider as a hybrid of a 3D and hunting site, and its targeted customer base is people who hunt as well as those who attend R100s and total archery challenges. The adjustment range on the site rivals most target sites like the XL Achieve, CBE Elevate and Axis, Montana Black Gold Competition Site, Bowfinger 1, just to name a couple. So it's built to allow the archer to reach out to distances significantly farther than he or she would, or rather should, consider ethical to loose an arrow at a an animal. This is why I also describe it as a target site masquerading as a hunting site between its adjustment range, ability to accept other brand scopes, and its price tag. One of the more frequently noticed and commented upon aspects of the UV slider is its price. As offered, it costs $599 plus tax and shipping. $600 for a site is thought of by many as being absurd, but is it really? So in this particular case, on the surface, the UV slider looks very expensive because, well, it is. But what exactly are you getting for that $600 as compared to the rest of the market? The UV slider comes as a kit with the sight rail, scope carrier, 3-pin adjustable scope, and an LED light module. If I go to Lancaster Archery's website and build that feature set out with another brand's products, there are some that end up being cheaper, there are some that come out even, and there are others that end up being more expensive. For example, take an Axel Landslide Carbon Pro, put a 3-pin AccuStat scope on it, and then give it a cheap sight light to come out to being $50 cheaper. Put a good sight light on it, and it actually costs more. Without doing a similar loadout for other brands or covering those, because this video is long enough as it is, the top end sights from other brands loaded out the same way as you would get with the package for the UV slider are similarly priced or more expensive. So while a lot of people are harping on the price, it's not alone at the top of the mountain in terms of pricing, and a number of other companies have reached the summit before them. In this particular category, when you get into target sites, specifically for like indoor, specifically 3D, and stuff like that, the sky's the limit when you start to get into lenses and, and scope and target bar combinations. I think the new XL XP whatever it is now, XP 
XL XP Pro. I think it starts at $500, and that doesn't include a scope. That's just for the target bar. So pricing is getting insane. UV looks crazy, but it really isn't. The most expensive site I could find that fits into the hunting 3D category at $620 without a sight light is the Option Archery Canyon Pounder. The worst thing about that one, though, is not the price. The worst part is having to tell people the sight on your bow is called the Canyon Pounder. Rip Nor McDonald. And not mincing words, there are also less expensive options that, let's face it, will do the same job. Ultimately, it's going to be up to the customer to decide how much they want to spend and how much that logo on the side is worth. I probably wouldn't have bought this one if I wasn't planning on reviewing it, but here we are. The thing I feel is more appropriate to harp on when it comes to pricing with UltraView is that the package has to be purchased as offered, and if you want to set it up in any other configuration, you have to buy the components separately, which increases the overall cost. Other manufacturers like Montana Black Gold or Dialed Archery have a custom shop feature on their website so the customer can order only the components they want to use. There might be an upcharge for it, but it usually does not equate to also paying for the stuff you don't plan on using plus the parts for the custom configuration. You're not paying double for stuff that you don't end up using, or you don't get double dipped, I believe is the term for that. UltraView does not give you that option. They choose to charge you extra to be able to set up their products the way you want them. In my case, my $599 site cost me $650 to use it the way I want, and they do this with every product they offer. Also, you can't currently piece it together by putting the individual items you want in your cart because the individual components are not listed as in stock, particularly the sight rail and this part of the scope. And they haven't been listed as in stock since shortly after they were released. So it's the hinges and UV buttons all over again. The slider comes one way, and if you want to use it any other way, it's going to cost you. The UV slider comes in a box with a magnetic lid, and inside that is a cloth zip case with a molded insert that contains the sight. There is a zippered mesh compartment in the lid that contains a plastic bag with the instructions, sight tapes, and a white ring insert that takes the place of the light module. The white insert is presumably for usages in locations where electronics are prohibited, or if you're a Luddite like myself who prefers not to have anything on the bow that requires batteries. The rest of the case contains the sight bar, scope carrier assembly with the scope, the mounting block, a box labeled spare hardware that I'll open up and examine on the top view, tabletop view, and a bag with the mounting bolts for the side mount block bracket. The zipper case is nice, but in order to be able to use it, your sight has to be fully disassembled after removing it from the bow. Taking it off the bow is not entirely toolless, so I don't think I'll be using it. It also doesn't have the storage capacity for another pin cartridge if you decide to switch between them. It's a nice display case, but not as functional as I would have liked. It's also fairly large and doesn't fit in a bow case, so if you use... So if you just use it to carry around your scope carrier, you'd be better off sourcing a smaller box that would fit in a pocket in your bow case. So it's kind of, kind of a waste, but it, you know, but I guess a $600 site should come with a nice case. Among the items in the box labeled spare hardware is a few plastic bags with two Allen keys, an extra bubble level, two extra disc batteries, an extra sight tape plate, and a solid brass indicator that has two pins. This is meant for use with the bonus pin that sits in, above the bubble level of the 3XL scope insert, and there is a card with a QR code linking instructions on how to set that up. I originally thought it was for the two pin hunting cartridge, but then I scanned the QR code and watch the video. So it's just another, it's an extension of what you can, of the capabilities that you can use with the 3XL scope or 3-pin adjustable scope insert, which I'm not planning on using, so that piece is useless to me. So along with all that stuff, there are two extra plastic pieces, and I don't know what they're for. The little one looks like a plug, and the curved one might have something to do with the battery compartment. Lastly, there are some extra screws that I'm not sure of their exact purpose. The little stainless one is a lockdown screw for the modules and the scope, and the larger ones might be replacement screws for the axis adjustment. So it's nice that they added or included some extra parts that we may lose or damage during use. The UV slider sight comes standard with a uv 3 x 3-pin scope cartridge with an integrated sight light module, and I would very much like to see them offer a customizable package on the website with different cartridge options. I needed to purchase the dual up-pin hunting cartridge that I'm actually planning on using 
separately, and I have no plans on using the 3-pin scope. With the 3-pin scope, you have no choice of fiber size. They are 15 thousandth, and the top pin is green, middle is yellow, and the bottom pin is also green, and you have no choice on that either. The hunting cartridge has a green top pin and a red second pin, and you have a choice between 10 thousandth and 19 thousandth fibers. So it would have been nice to be able to buy the kit with the three pin exchange for the hunting cartridge instead of having to pay extra for it. Instead, you have to buy the scope with a three pin cartridge, sight light, white scope ring, and white no light vis ring as offered, and then buy everything else you want to customize it to your preferences. The sight rail by itself has a listing on the website for purchase without a scope, but it's been listed as sold out for months, just like the scope housing. If those are in stock, you'd be able to buy them and then go through the website and piece together your preferred configuration, but they seem to be focusing on getting the whole package out instead of giving you the option of being able to buy that stuff and then piece everything together. So, priorities. The body of the site comes in one color, black. So if you're looking for something other than black, you'll need to look somewhere else. There are parts of the site that can be changed out for the purpose of color coordination, and once again, you have to buy them separately. Ultraview offers the site in right and left-handed models sort of. Instead of being a mirror image of the right-handed site, the left-handed site is literally the right-handed site flipped over with the scope remounted so it can be bolted on a left-handed riser. I find it insulting to even offer this as an option. If you're going to claim to have a left-handed version, then you need to actually put in the time to make a left-handed version. I know lefties are only 10% of the population, and a lot of lefties, like myself, shoot bows right-handed. But come on, that's just half-assed. And faithful customers deserve nothing less than full-ass. Anyway, mounting options for the UV slider include the side dovetail mount, which is what I bought, a Picatinny mount, or the Matthews bridge lock. There is no word yet on whether Ultraview will offer a Bowtech core mount. The side mount and the bridge lock are both dovetail bars, but they are not designed exactly the same. The bridge lock and Picatinny mounts both have an offset built into them to account for their mounting locations. The side mount of the UV slider is a straight bar, and in my next video I'm going to talk about why atypical mounting systems such as the Picatinny mounts, the bridge lock APA's new mounting system, and Bowtech's new core system are, in my opinion, dumb ideas with one positive function and the rest of the push being marketing speak intended to separate you from your money. The side mount the block is designed with a spring-loaded ball bearing on the bottom and a locking set screw on top, so the dovetail bar can be easily indexed to the position you want. There are five available positions on it to help align your peep sight and scope ring if you're into that sort of thing. The use of a set screw keeps it low profile and streamlined as opposed to a thumb knob, but it also means you need an Allen key to unlock the dovetail bar from the mounting block. So just like the dialed Arxos, I think they're trying to tell us we might as well leave that part attached to the bow, probably for the following reason. The side mount dovetail bar is made of aluminum and has notches in the bar instead of detents for the ball bearing to catch and the set screw to settle into. One issue with using notches versus detents is that the set screw doesn't have any kind of soft tip on the end of it, it's just a stainless steel grub screw with a rounded end. It's also wider than the notches into which it's supposed to fit. So when you lock it down to keep it from moving, which you have no choice but to do, you will automatically put marks in the finish of the dovetail bar, just like I'll show on the screen. I'll put a picture up. The scope carrier has an easy on-off function, so it's easier to just pull that and store it instead of trying to remove the entire site. So it's easier to just pull to just pull this off and leave the rest of the rail on the bow. It also fits better into the case this way as well. The interface between the dovetail bar and the sight rail has three available positions to set your yardage range, and the interface also houses the first, second, and third axis adjustments right here. First, second, and third axes are micro-adjustable and are labeled specifically. Ultraview is not the first company to make them all micro-adjustable, despite what some reviewers may be saying about it. That would be Montana Black Gold with their comp Edition sites. I have two of those and I'll do a review on them at some point. They're seriously overbuilt and they deserve some attention. Anyway, there are only two adjustment points for the three axes on the UV slider. I actually wasn't aware of this until I was writing this review, but apparently first axis is the angle of the actual elevation bar, second axis is the angle of the scope to make it sit level and perpendicular to the elevation bar, and the third axis is the swinging door one to make sure the bubble is level at extreme up or down 
down angles. I already knew, I knew that one, I just didn't know the difference between first and second. The scope rod on the UV slider does not have its own angle adjustment, so that's why the adjustment at the back of the elevation bar is labeled first and second. Because the angle of the scope is fixed and hopefully perpendicular to the elevation bar, the one adjustment does the work of both. The scope carrier assembly looks to be pretty sturdy, and I won't lament having one less thing that can shift or move when I inevitably bump it against something like I just did. The weight of the UV slider pretty much sits right in the middle of the pack in terms of the 3D hunting target sights, at least the ones that I've measured. It is without the mounting block, the side mount block, the dovetail bar, it comes in at 12.7 ounces and 13.8 with the mounting block. So it sits right in the middle of the pack in terms of weight for this particular category of sight. The sight comes with 40 stick-on sight tapes as well as a sight scale tape and another tape labeled AM, which I surmise is to be used with the Archer's Mark app. I don't know for certain because it isn't written in the instructions, but I don't know what else it could be. There is a small single indicator pin on the outside of the sight carrier, scope carrier, to be used with a sight scale tape to choose the appropriate yardage tape. There are metal plates mounted on the outside and inside of the sight that can be removed to make it easier to install the tapes onto them or switch between them. It also comes with a full set of right and left-handed tapes, which are actual mirrors of each other, unlike the sights themselves. I'm not sure why both sets are included, other than to cater to left-handed archers who skipped over selecting left-handed and just flipped over a right-handed sight themselves. Many of the sight tapes include yardages out past 100 yards, and the elevation bar provides more than enough range of motion to run out of arrow clearance before running out of travel. That's a nice touch with the tapes, but they really need to come out with their own metal tapes. The sight is definitely designed to accept them, so maybe that'll be something to come out in the future. I would hope so. The whole spacing on the UV slider does not permit the use of other companies' metal tapes like CB or Axel, or at least you won't be able to get bolts into both mounting holes on the tapes. Ultraview only drilled and tapped three sets of holes to mount their own plates. They slotted their plates to allow them to slide up or down, but they definitely had room for at least one extra set of mounting holes, and if they had drilled and tapped the entire line of the rail, we might have been able to use metal tapes from other brands with a little bit of modification. B3 Archery used the same hole spacing as CBE for their metal tapes on their sights, but that's partly because a former CBE engineer was designing them for them. Sherlock metal tapes might have a chance given their length, but I don't have any to check yet. I did order a set, but they haven't shown up yet, so that'll be for part two. By comparison, the landslide is drilled and tapped with five sets of holes despite having a shorter rail. Also, I just noticed when I checked them that CBE and Axel metal tapes have similar hole spacing and probably fit each other's sights. Cross compatibility is nice, and I wish there was more of it in the industry, but I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for it. The yardage indicator pins, if you can see them there, are extremely sharp to the extent that they shipped the scope carrier with a foam block labeled Sharp Objects Use Caution. If you're planning on storing the scope carrier separately from the site, you might want to hang on to this foam block and use it to protect the pins from damage. Just shove it back in place, uh, that way uh, they won't get bent if they get hit on something. The indicator pins sit very close to the sight tape, and that's actually good and something that was lacking in the dialed Arxos. The pins on the Arxos are too thick, and they sit too high above the tape to get a precise setting unless you look at them from the exact same angle every time. The indicators on the UV slider should make it easy to get a precise setting at whatever angle you're looking at them. The three indicator pins consist of a fixed middle and a movable top and bottom. This configuration works in concert with the fixed middle sight pin in the scope and the movable top and bottom. The sight in process is unique in that you sight the fixed middle pin first at 30 yards and then adjust the top and the bottom to hit 20 and 40 without moving the scope body. It should be fairly easy to complete, it's just different from the way every other sight is done. Dialed in. The dial on the slider is fairly, it's actually very easy to move. It's not buttery smooth like everyone's saying, but it's also not gritty and doesn't stack or stutter. The carrier holds its position firmly enough not to need to lock it down or keep it from shifting, even though I don't know if that would move if, move if you left it up while you're shooting it. The tension on the dial doesn't appear to have any means to adjust it other than the locking lever itself. You could kind of, you could actually adjust the tension, just kind of leave it in place if you want to make it stiffer. So, something to think about. You don't have to lock it down 
around fully. Unlike the dialed Arxos, at least the one that I have, the locking system on the UV slider actually works and keeps the carrier from moving unless you choose to just grab a handful of wheel and force it to turn. Why you would need to do that when the locking lever is in such a naturally accessible location is unclear unless you're in a high tense situation or you just plain forget to unlock it. I had one of those duh moments when I was writing this script. I took the carrier off and put it in the case, and when I took it back out and tried to put it back on, I forgot to flip the locking lever back up before trying to reinstall it. It does go back together with the lever in the down position, but it isn't easy. Of course, if I had read the instructions, I may have caught that before I muscled it all together. I'll actually be interested to see if the lock loses tension over time if it's frequently bypassed. Because there's got to be friction in there that's... Uh, something's got to wear down if you do that enough. That'll be uh, part of the longitudinal study. The elevation wheel has a rubber cover over it. That piece is called the dual dial wheel grip. The standard color is gray, and the other colors... There are other colors available, including black, OD green, and dune, which is flat dark earth. Once again, if you want something other than gray, it's going to cost you extra, and you cannot substitute it. I bought a black and an OD green one, and I'm going to open their packages and install them on camera for reasons I'll cover in my section on fit and finish. The other part of the dual dial is the windage adjustment knob that is mounted in the middle of the elevation wheel. To adjust windage, you pull the knob out to unlock it, make your adjustments, and then push it back in to relock it. The windage is micro-adjustable only and has detents for uniform changes. There is no gang adjustment for the windage. The pitch of the threads on the windage adjustment are such that turning the knob clockwise brings the scope in closer to the riser and counterclockwise moves it out further. I may be mistaken, but some sites are the other way around and whichever way I think I'm supposed to be turning it, it's all, almost always the other direction and I have to backtrack. The UV slider is more intuitive to anyone who follows the righty tidy lefty loosey adage. It's kind of hard to have it pick up on camera, but the scope rod is marked with a numbered scale to help reference the distance the site moves when you turn the windage knob, and there are roughly 20 clicks between each notch. So it should be easy to very precisely dial in your windage. Elevation is not micro-adjustable on the site itself. Like most hunting 3D hybrids, your manual dexterity and the tension of the dial determines how finely you can set your yardage. The site also lacks stoppers to set the top and bottom of your travel, so you can't just give it a twist and stop dead on your 20. Supposedly they're working on adding one, and I hope it's backwards compatible. A lot of people, including myself, will be pissed, but not entirely surprised if it is not. The front-facing portion of the sight bar that engages with the gears in the scope carrier is made of a high-strength plastic, such as Delrin, and some people were complaining about it, referring to the UV slider as a plastic piece of garbage. For comparison, the Axel Landslide actually has a very similar construction, so if it's an issue on the UV slider, then Axel is also worthy of criticism. Delrin, or whatever it is, is very tough polymer, so I'm not terribly concerned about its durability. The rails the scope carrier moves up and down on are the same material, and there are metal inserts in the scope carrier that fit into those tracks. So that kind of lends to why it's smooth and and why it has no and why it has no backtracking or why it has no backlash or slop in between the gears. The UV slider will accommodate other company scopes, but the only feature that I can think of that will warrant the use of a different scope besides owning the parts already and conserving money by using what you have would be a single pin that can be oriented in any position other than straight up. The up pin in a UltraView scope cannot be rotated, while scopes like the Shrewd Optum have eight different positions you can set the pin, including at 40 degree angles. The scope has a nice large bubble level. It's easy to see and there is a dedicated LED to illuminate the bubble if you so desire. The scope light is designed to have a number of brightness settings and two different modes. You can light up the pins and the bubble level or you can just light up the pins and leave the bubble level dark. Presumably the latter will buy you more battery life. The pins themselves are, well, they're on, the three pin ones are 15,000th and they are sufficiently bright for my taste without the sight light on, but I can see why some people would prefer if they were brighter. Swapping inserts and cartridges in and out of the scope housing is easy because they are held in by a single set screw. The set screws are designed to be unable to be completely backed out of the housing, so when you turn them counterclockwise you need to stop turning when you feel resistance. Then you wiggle the insert out until it slides out. You then press in the insert you're installing into the scope and tighten the set screw back down without over tightening it. 
there are a variety of inserts front and back available for purchase, and once again, if you want to use a different configuration than what is offered, it's going to cost you. There are single and double up pin cartridges, as well as inserts for lenses and magnification. On the back end, you have the light module and non-light scope rings they call vis rings, and they come in a variety of colors. The sight light module uses two CR2025 disc batteries, and they are a size that is available at any local pharmacy. They are supposed to give you six hours of light at 80% brightness, and they have an auto shut off after four minutes of inactivity. What they mean by inactivity is you have to toggle the brightness settings to keep them on. It's not like a dot sight with a shake awake function where it would power down after a set period with no movement and then turn itself back on when it detects motion again. That would be nice, and maybe the next generation of UV light mount can have that, although I can envision people forgetting to turn it off and then just having it lighting on and off constantly while it's in its case. You'd still have to turn it off when you're at the range, but you can still have a shake awake function. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. Speaking of options, as for that non-adjustable stacked vertical 3-pin scope that was teased recently by Elk Shape, which I'm going to talk about the meta of that in a moment, I don't personally find any value in that setup. Without the ability to adjust them, you're unlikely to have them correspond to any regular yardage interval. So you're going to end up with a scope like a 2037 and then a 48-pin set. If you can remember that during a high-stress situation, and you can gap the pins accordingly, then great. But if not, you may still be required to move the sight so it matches the yardage you need. You might not have to move it up as far, up or down as far, because there's going to be a pin close enough to it that'll correspond to the yardage, but you're still going to have to move it. So I don't get why people are excited about that. I can wrap my head around a two-pin setup or a single pin with a long-range pin above the bubble level. That way you can use the bottom pin to reach out farther before you run out of arrow clearance. The three-pin concept just doesn't seem useful to me if you can't adjust them. There are companies out there, though, that are trying to make that work. So recently, a company called Dark Owl Archery is making, or started to make their own scope with a fixed three-pin stalk. But you have a choice of pin gaps that would match your sight tape in a more uniform fashion. You're screwed if you change anything in your setup, though, but it's an innovative approach to a fixed vertical pin system. Ultimately, the ideal situation would be making the pins all independently adjustable. It would probably make things way more complicated for the engineers in charge of designing it, but it would be much more user-friendly for for the customer. If you're going to do it, might as well take it to its logical conclusion. There are companies that do kind of have that, like Trophy Ridge has the V5 React site, where it's a vertical stack, but all the pins, I mean, they use their React technology, so they're not independently adjustable, but they do move in a way that would make it possible to have a vertical stack, but with movable pins. So that's one way they figured it out, and maybe they have a patent on it or something. I've been listening to a lot of reviews of the UV slider since it came out, and two things stuck out, and I wanted to point them out so my viewers can watch them and maybe start picking up on these things themselves. If you find value in long-form video essays like the ones that I put out, I would wager you're on more of the intelligent end of the bell curve, so you might be a little more perceptive than others. The first thing I noticed was that reviewers with the largest audiences, early access, or the ones who get free samples, are very quick to sing the praises of a product and reluctant to criticize it. I know I'm not breaking any new ground pointing out that a large swath of YouTubers pretend to be reviewers when they're actually an extension of the company's marketing team. I just didn't realize how pervasive it was. So getting back to Elk Shape, Ultraview recently teased a vertical stacked 3-pin scope insert by sending one to Elk Shape. He made a video review of it and pretended like he wasn't sure if he was supposed to do so. If there's any crossover between his audience and mine and you saw his video, please don't be fooled into believing that shtick he did about not being sure if he was supposed to show everyone and that he might get in trouble with Ultraview for posting a video. Anytime you hear a content creator say, I didn't want to make this video, or I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell you about this, or something similar, they are feeding you a line of bullshit. He knows what he's doing, he was happy to be the one to tease the new product because it's great for his channel, Ultraview knew and expected he was going to make a video about it, if they didn't instruct him to do just that. It's all marketing and marketing research because after the video was posted, there were threads being made all over social media asking when that is going to be available. Alright, so enough breaking new ground that YouTubers are shills. The second point I've heard 
a number of times is that Ultraview is focused on bringing out the best quality products it can, and they bring a unique perspective, do things differently, and come up with innovative products. The best way to examine a statement, perspective, opinion, or argument and see if it holds up to scrutiny is to ask follow-up questions. So my question is, is there anything unique to the UV slider that has not yet been done by another company? There are definitely things reviewers and influencers are attributing to Ultraview as being unique to them, like the micro-adjustable axis adjustments, and they're not actually the first ones to do it. So I'm going to go over a few of those and let you know whether they are unique or not. Is the toolless scope carrier removal and reinstallation part an innovation or invention from Ultraview? Well, no, because the B3 Archery Exact Rise site has a similar removal system. You run the site to the bottom of its travel and you can pull the carrier from the bottom of the rail. So this didn't come. This didn't get it first. This one does have a button lock though, so that's something. Is the lever lock system something unique to Ultraview? or innovative, possibly. Other sites have elevation locks, but Ultraview is the first one to use a fairly large lever for it and put it in this particular location. I'm not sure how the brake system works because I'd have to take the scope apart to examine it, but I'm fine with giving them this one. It's probably the most ergonomic location to put one of those locks, so I'd um, chalk it up to innovation. So how about the dual dial system? That's relatively unique, having the windage knob unlock by pulling out and lock by pushing back in and having it situated inside the elevation wheel. So that one's fine. I don't know of any that operates in this fashion. Some of them have levers or push buttons to unlock them or levers. So so that's kind of innovative. So what about the self-contained sight light module? Yes, that is one where they deserve credit. They didn't invent the archery sight light, but they did not make one that was self-contained within the scope. So that's one they definitely deserve credit for, unless I'm just not up on my research. How about the Elevation Lock Override? Uh, no. Dialed Archery's Arxos did that first, and it came out first. So I don't know if there's another site that came out before the Arxos, but Ultraview didn't do it first. How about Easy Scope Module Changes? Possibly. Other companies with module scope parts are either threaded on so the parts screw together, or they are slotted and bolted together, like with the shrewd sights, like the Optum. Ultraview uses a combination of press fitting and lockdown set screws, so it's different. I wouldn't necessarily call it revolutionary, but it's innovative. So how about micro-adjustable first, second, and third axis? Uh, no. Montana Black Gold did that first with their competition sights, where everything on them is overbuilt and micro adjustable. Those things deserve way more attention than they actually get, so I'm going to have to do a review on them sometime. So if I'm being charitable, you could attribute this to a lot of parallel invention. If I'm being cynical, as is my natural state, I would say the designers and engineers at Ultraview looked at the feature sets of other companies' sites and came up with a list of features that they wanted on their own. Stuff that they saw, there isn't anything, it's hard to come up with new, completely new inventions anymore. So you just take the, you look at other people's stuff and go, I want this, 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 I want this from this site, this from another site, and I want it all in one package. I'm not necessarily saying this is bad or even abnormal, because I'm sure, because companies follow each other's lead all the time, but I think some reviewers are giving them credit for inventing things when what they're actually doing is innovating. The two terms are neither mutually exclusive nor interchangeable, and I've heard a few people use one when they meant the other. Invention involves making something completely new. Innovation involves taking existing ideas and modifying them to increase their real-world utility. Something I'm planning on paying more attention to and making sure I mention in my reviews is country of manufacture. According to Ultraview's website, Ultraview products are proudly designed and built in the USA. Made in the USA has some very specific conditions that need to be met in order to put that label on something. Built in the USA does not carry the same weight and can apply to imported parts that are not manufactured here but have their final assembly completed in the US. So does that mean that Ultraview is having their parts manufactured somewhere else, importing them and then assembling them in their factory in Georgia? Not necessarily. Some components of their scopes, particularly the electronics, are almost exclusively made overseas. Screws and fasteners tend not to be 
made in the U.S. anymore. Everything else, though, there's no reason they couldn't make it here on a CNC other than the cost of buying the machinery and training people to use it. It's a lot more expensive to do it yourself than to send plans to somebody else to do it for you. The sourcing and manufacture of raw materials could also matter as well. So I don't know if I'm making a stink over nothing, but I would like to see Ultraview clarify exactly where their components are manufactured. If it does turn out their parts are being manufactured outside the U.S. and assembled here, my opinion of them is going to change significantly. The prices they are commanding for their stuff is definitely made in the USA pricing, and I would hate to think that they are not doing so. The dial on this particular UV slider has zero slop when changing directions, so a thumbs up on Ultraview for keeping tight tolerances in that regard. I hope it doesn't lose it. Yeah, there is nothing. There is no, uh, no slop between those gears, so good on them for that. Conversely, the windage knob does have a little bit of backlash when changing directions. The instructions from UV state the windage knob should pull out and push back in with a positive click. The knob on the slider I received just slides in and out smoothly and doesn't click at all. I doubt it would shift on its own if, unless I hit it on something, but it doesn't behave the way it's supposed to as highlighted in the literature and the promotional materials. The clicks on the windage knob are tactile, but the movements are not as positive as compared to something like the dial Arxos or Axel landslide. And this doesn't have to be one of those things that needs to be quiet. You're not going to be adjusting your windage while you're hunting. The dual dial grip does not fit as snugly as I would like. It has indentations on the inside to interlock with the indentations on the wheel itself, but it slips on and off far too easily. It should be significantly tighter, and it shouldn't lift up in places when you press on it like so. It should fit like a steering wheel cover or a cell phone case where effort is actually needed to get it on and off. I also wouldn't mind a ruggedized version that is harder and snaps on and off instead of just pulling it. I'm going to unpack these two dual dial grips. I have a black and an OD green one to see if they fit any better than the one that came on the site. The more often they're removed and replaced, the looser they're bound to get. So if it fits tightly, I don't have any plans to take it off. So I'm going to switch to the desktop view to do that. Okay, so we got our dual dial grip here. This is the one that came with it, and that comes off way too easily. So now I have, I have a black one and an OD green one. I'm really planning on using the OD green one because the bow that I'm going to be putting it on is OD green. So I'm hoping that this piece fits way stiffer, way more tightly than the one that came with it. Let's get that around there. The pieces are supposed to interlock with each other, so. Alright, they're just seated in. Okay, so the aftermarket, well, after, if you want to call it aftermarket, the one that showed up with it is loose. The ones that you can buy separately actually fit more tightly. You can still squeeze it and have it lift up just a little bit, but that is a lot more snug. All right, so I won't be taking the black one out. So yeah, if you buy the separate ones that are different colors, then you can get rid of the silver one and get one that actually fits way better. So that was a fun exercise. The ones that you can buy separately, the dual dial grips that you can buy separately, actually fit way better than the one that showed up with it, which is super. The wheel itself is plastic construction, and the walls on it are thin enough that you can flex them if you squeeze them. Functionally, it works, but it feels very cheap and is out of place and on a site that is mostly made of metal and costs as much as this one. I don't know why they have they decided on an injection molded plastic piece for this wheel unless it has to do with the fitment of the windage dial. I don't know, it feels out of place and I think it feels cheap.
Batches 1 and 2 of the UV slider had a few issues. The biggest one was that Ultraview went cheap on the hardware. The stainless steel screws they used for the construction were soft, and a lot of the heads were rounded off during assembly and sent out regardless, so QC was a bit lacking when they rushed out the first batches. Ultraview was heavily criticized and seems to have addressed the issue, going so far as to send out kits with replacement hardware of higher quality. There were also reports of screws backing out in certain areas of the site, and Ultraview seems to have responded to this by applying thread locker to absolutely every screw on the thing. Batch 3 looks like it has much better hardware. The slider I received does not have any rounded or warped screw heads. The set screws are all bare stainless and the cap screws are steel with a glossy coat of black. They look to be of good quality but they don't have a head stamp so I can't verify their manufacturer. I will say though that the fit of my tools into the heads is tight, so there's not a lot of slop or play in the uh, the old yellow folding key set. The finish on the aluminum parts appears to be anodized. I'm not sure, but if it's Cerakoted, they did a very good job. The finish is consistent, and there are no scratches or scuffs aside from the mark that I made on the dovetail bar with the set screw that locks it to the mounting block. So other than that, it was flawless. The controls on the LED module are small and can be difficult to press. They'd be a pain to try and operate with gloves on, I think. The buttons could afford to be a bit larger or have a cover over them to assist in pressing them. However, everything does function as it's supposed to. So sighting in the three pin scope module requires sighting in the fixed center pin at 30 as a first step and then adjusting the top pin for your 20 and then the bottom pin for 40 or whatever you want it to be. I don't know why they didn't just make them all adjustable other than making a three pin tape indicator assembly is easier when the center pin doesn't move. Is this a chicken and egg situation? I don't know, but that's how they did it. I would like to see Ultraview set up the website to offer a custom shop where the accessories for the sites can be customized instead of having to buy a kit with things we won't use and then buy the things that we will. You can even charge a little extra for the custom build. Companies can only double dip so many times before they start losing customers, though given the backlog of orders that Ultraview currently has, that is not going to happen anytime soon for them. If Ultraview is going to offer a left-handed option, they should take back any of the flipped over right-handed sites they sold as left-handed ones and replace them with a proper left-handed site. I still cannot believe they did that. There needs to be a retrofit for, at minimum, a top stopper to do a fast return to 20, and it should not require the purchase of a whole new site. In conclusion, the UV slider is a well thought out site, streamlined design, and it should do its job if it holds up over time. Ultraview did not reinvent the bow site. They just put out their version of it with the features that they wanted. They need to fix a few things that don't quite click on it the way they're supposed to, particularly the windage knob and the dial grip. If they're not going to function the way that they're supposed to in the literature, or you have to buy an extra piece in order to get a nice fit, then I think that's lacking. The site itself is easily customizable if your bank account can keep pace with your purchases. There's nothing about this site that overtly turns me off from it, and I'll be using it on my used Remedy that I just bought. That said, I doubt I would have bought it if I wasn't going to review it, and there are definitely sites that are less expensive and do just as much. If you're a fan of Ultraview products and want the latest and greatest, then this is right up your alley. It's not perfect, and I don't like the way Ultraview does their upselling, and if you don't like it either, then there are other options to consider if uh, those things are a turnoff for you. From a standpoint of practicality, there is nothing this site does that other sites don't do as well. However, if the features on it are appealing to you and the controls are located in places you like, and you can still keep a roof over your head after paying for it, then it's worth giving it a shot. So that's all I can really say about it. I'll do a follow follow up on it at some point when there's anything else that I think you should know about, I'll, um, I'll post it up. If you want to share your opinions on it and you have any questions or if there's anything I missed or got wrong, please let me know in the comments. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and happy hunting. Of course, I'm going to end up covering my own face. I'm, I look like Wilson from Home Improvement.